today looking at a dandy revolver from the Smith & Wesson Performance Center. You know, the Performance Center, I've been to the factory before, it's part of the factory, it's kind of a factory within a factory at Smith & Wesson where they make special runs of some really nice guns they do. They're hand fitted and uh, put together, you know, just the old time craftsmanship and they do them and they do them right. They cost a little more, but for the premium you pay on a Performance Center gun, you're getting a lot of gun for your money. You know, instead of having a gun just custom built by some gunsmith would cost you three times as much if they could do it. But this one from the Performance Center is a 629 Hunter, which is chambered in 44 Magnum or to shoot 44 Special interchangeably. Six shot cylinder, smooth cylinder, non fluted. It's a nice, uh, uh, hefty revolver, was a little over 50 ounces on my scale. It's got a, a 8 and 3 8 inch fluted barrel on it, it's a heavy profile barrel, fluted. It is drilled on top for an included optics rail, screws on here, drilled on the bottom for an accessory rail. If you want to put a, uh, some hunters like to use a bipod and put a light on there, a white light, laser, whatever you want to on the bottom, but it is drilled and tapped and thankfully they're not machined into it. I like them off there myself, but they're included with the gun if you want them. Also comes this cable lock. Comes with keys for the internal Smith & Wesson lock, which is a lock which will render the gun inoperable if you want to. If it's a safety problem, you can't lock your gun up. You want to make it where somebody can't get a hold of it and use it. You can lock it up. If you don't, just ignore it. Don't hurt anything. I've never had one of the things locked themselves. A lot of people don't like the locks on them, but the only one I've ever had to do that was a 329 PD. And the recoil of that thing on that light gun would lock it, but I've never had that problem on any of the other Smith & Wessons from 20 toes to 500 Magnums. Had no problem with it locking on this uh, 629 Hunter. So, that's a feature you can use or ignore. It's up to you. Got some beautiful stocks on it. Nice wood stocks and they're thin. They're not as fat as a lot of the end frame uh, square butt grips you run across. So it gives you a good hold on the gun, but it's not so uh, uh, not like holding a two before or something like that. They feel really good in my hand. Has a trigger stop on back of this uh, chrome plated trigger. Has a teardrop checkered hammer. Excellent trigger pull. Just smooth, typical Smith & Wesson polish like you see on a, a hand fitted Smith & Wesson, which this one is. Trigger pull comes in about seven and a half pounds on this gun. Single action just barely over four pounds. Just light and crisp as it can be. The gun functions 100%. Uh, as far as the accuracy, this thing is just it's max accurate. 25 yards, I had it in my ransom rest to eliminate my human error out of it. And it shot groups of under one inch at uh, 25 yards, five shot groups. In particular, like the uh, Buffalo Boar 180 grain hollow points, which is an excellent load. And they run out of this gun. And I think I average is 1705 feet per second for 180 grain bullets. So it's really screaming out of here and they shoot into a ragged hole. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> At 25 yards out of that ransom rest. Now the sights are real nice and, and they, they make it easy to see this front one is a, uh, a day glow type sight. It's a, a plastic sight that you can, you can shows up real well in most lighting conditions. Really good on a hunting gun. Works really well, and, and even using those socks, get real good accuracy. Now, out of the ransom rest, I can get almost good accuracy shooting handheld over a rest, but I can't do it all day, every day, like I can with that ransom. So the ransom really helps me to check out how accurate a gun can be uh, without depending on how well I can shoot. But anyway, it's a nice gun, quality gun from Smith & Wesson. MSRP, as of the date of this review, is $13.99 US, but you can shop around and do a little, bit, a little bit better than that, but 44 Magnum, nice powerful weapon, uh, good hunting gun. This is special made for hunting. It's also good for other purposes. Uh, like I said, it's match accurate. If you want to you target shoot with this thing, it's real, real good to do. It's also uh, been an effective big side gun if you want to really put a hole in something or defense against something like a, a large bears, things like that. And if you're not hunting them, if you're out where they hang around, it's good to have something like this around. But it's a good weapon from Smith & Wesson Performance Center. A couple good loads I want to tell you about here. Besides that 180 grain Buffalo Bore hollow point load, which would be ideal for, for uh, defense against uh, uh, human beings, people, uh, things like that you need to 
for personal defense and for whitetail deer hunting, that 180 grain is a good bullet. Also, Buffalo Boy has this anti-personnel 200 grain wad cutter, it's flat nose, that'll really make a good clean hole and stuff. That's a good load to use. Also, this uh, Extreme Penetrator from Lehigh Defense. It's got this fluted, solid copper bullet in here and that really does a good job. They penetrate just like a solid bullet, but the fluting in that bullet uh, makes it do more damage and of course it don't hurt anything or no feeding problems or anything like that in a revolver like this. So works really well. I really like this bullet uh, from Lehigh Defense. Some really good ammo, a lot of good choice in 44 Magnum out there. Uh, for uh, personal defense, 44 Special works real good. Buffalo Boar also has some low recoil 44 Magnum stuff that, you know, there's just a wide variety of loads. You can even shoot 44 Russian in there if you want to. Like cowboy stuff for little plinking loads. Work your way up to the full power Buffalo Boar stuff. The only Buffalo Boar load they say do not use in this gun is the 340 grain. It's only made for some stronger revolvers. It's just a, it's a real long, it's a heavy bullet and running under a lot of pressure. It's a plus P plus uh, Magnum load and uh, do not use that in here. And I've already had a question about that. That's the reason I mentioned it. Don't use that in the Smith & Wessons. But other than that, great gun. You, you know, a lot of powerful ammo out there you can use in it. Available for this 44 Magnum. First, I'm going to shoot a 44 Special Load out of here. And it's not a lightweight, sissy little cowboy action 44 Special Load. This is a serious load. It's from Buffalo Boar. It shoots a 255 grain Keith at about 1,100 feet per second out of this 8 and 3 8 inch barrel. It's an excellent white tail load, excellent defense load, has lighter recoil than your full power 44 mags, but still get the job done. I'm gonna shoot some full power stuff. It's the Buffalo Boar 180 grain jacket of the hollow point load. Screams out of here at over 1700 feet per second. Really effective load for, for hunting. Thanks, Tim. Shoot some of these Lehigh Defense Extreme Penetrators into our Crow Magnum target, kind of just to see what effect it has on the material of that target. It's a, a dense rubber target, uh, hard rubber, but uh, hadn't shot any penetrators through there before, so I want to see what it does to it. Steel behind it sound like. Just made holes in here like the other bullets did like solids. I've noticed with hollow points, it'll take out a little tissue sample, you know, the hollow point, but this uh, penetrator didn't chew it up any worse than regular solids do. But uh, I've used those penetrator stuff in uh, ballistic gel before, never shot any real flesh with it, but it really tears up the gel. But this is our little uh, transgender buddy here, and we're shooting him up a little bit.
He's transgender. 